Good afternoon, Ms. Marx. Good afternoon, Chief Justice. Are you well and relaxed? Ah, I don't think you can ever be relaxed when oh. you come here, but I'm well, thank you. Okay. Um, after completing your law degrees, what did you do? What, um, what, what, what work did you do? All right, I started T to- Tell us with the first you started, we'll take it stage by stage. With law. Um, I started to prosecute. For, in, for how, it, was it in the district court? Or in the district know? court. For in, how many years? For three years in the district court in Verulam and in Tezuma. Then I went on to the district court bench, both for Verulam and Tezuma. It was the Inanda district. I did my regional court test in 91. You did in what? My regional court test. Oh, yes. In 1991. Um, and I was permanently appointed in May 92. Yes. So I'm actually in that position now on the regional court bench. Since 1992. Yes. Um, that's more than 20 years, am I mistaken? I think. Close to 30, 30. No. From 86 on the bench. Yeah, it's over 20 years. That's what I'm saying. I think 92, when you get to 202, it was 10. 2012, it was 20. And then from 2012, you around 25. 25, Not yes. quite 30 yet. Yeah. And in that capacity, did you also get to do um, civil work? Yes. As regional court magistrate? Well, first in the district court, when I was still a district court magistrate. Sure. We did civil work. Then um, since 2010, uh, civil jurisdictions being conferred on the regional court now. So we get to do civil work as well. When did you personally uh, begin to do civil work in, uh, in the regional court? Well, on and off 2010, um, but I've also acted in the High Court. We were going to get there. Okay, yes. yes. Oh, very yeah. well. T tell us about the how, If you, you add up your acting stints in the High Court, how many months does it amount to? Well, this is what I wanted to tell you. After I uh, put my application in, I've be, I was invited to act again in KwaZulu-Natal, Durban, so together with the um, nine months, I did another two months now. So it's 11 months all in all. 11 months. Have you settled down at high court level or are you experiencing some challenges still? Significant I, challenges. I love it at a high court level. <laughs> it's one thing to love it, but uh, uh, I, I, uh, are you flowing? Are there still hurdles to, to, to jump over? Just give us a sense of uh, uh, how it is there. Look, it's extremely challenging. It is heavy roles in the High Court, uh, especially the civil component. The Secret, I think, is to be well prepared, well organized. You have to sacrifice a lot of time. In fact, one could even say it's, it, it's a calling. It's not a job. It's a 24-7 uh, occupation as such. Even on this last occasion, um, there were evenings that you were up well after midnight, reading, preparing. I possibly would take the Saturday off to do shopping or go and see my son play a hockey match in the afternoon. But otherwise, Sunday you would be working as well, going through the files, especially if you're in motion court uh, close in the week. And um, in terms of uh, delivering reserve judgments, uh, how long does it take to get that done on average? Well, the longest I've ever taken is the two months. 
and that's one of the judgments I did send in. It's a minister's judgment. Um, and that was, I think, in 2014 or 15. I'm not too sure. But you, you get better at it the more experience sure. that you gain. Yes. This last occasion I've just acted, um, I didn't reserve one of my judgments. They were handed down during the term. Um, and I was able to also give some extempore judgments. Sure. You sort of get tips from the other judges that assist you. And I've been very fortunate that there was always fairly open door policy with the senior civil judges um, to assist. However, I have to advise you that in my last stint, there was a civil trial that I picked up that had to be adjourned. So I've picked up a part heard, but only for one witness in the defendant's case. And it was extremely unfortunate. The Friday he was supposed to come testify, his father died, and he had to go and organize and sort out the burial. So I had to allow that um, postponement. And criminal matters, how, does it how long does it take you to deliver judgment? Criminal matters... In the are, High Court. In the High Court, they extempore. I normally would hear the argument, say, in the afternoon, and the following day, I would deliver my extempore judgment in open court. Um, so I've not had to reserve... Uh, criminal judgment with trial. For criminal appeals, if you're sitting full court appeals, um, that is a different story because you have to, uh, how can I say, make sure that everything is completely in order, um, especially if one of the judges do not agree and you the scribe, et cetera. So that's a different matter. But the trials are deliver extempore. Should it make any difference that you haven't acted uh, in the Western Cape High Court, at least according to my records, or does it not matter? High Court is High Court. Well, I'm hoping it doesn't matter. Uh, it's uniform rules of court. I do know that the divisions might have different practice directives. Um, I'm a FOSC learner. I will learn their practice directives very quickly. I've had a quick glimpse through, some of which is similar. Um, I also have friends there, ex-colleagues of mine, in the High Court in the Western Cape. The, only problem is I haven't acted for the JP from the Western Cape. So it will probably be difficult for him to know what my work ethic is probably like, etc. But I can guarantee him I got a very, very strong work ethic. JP? Thank you very much, Chief Justice. Let's just kick off from there. Working as a judge in the High Court is teamwork, not so? Correct. You now want to work with people you have never seen before because I'm not going to allocate you with your friends on the bench. I don't see that as a problem at all. Okay, fine. Were you born in KZN? No, I was actually born in Johannesburg. For how long have you lived in Wazulu Natal? We moved to KwaZulu-Natal when I was a girl of about 10. Thank you. I take it you are fluent in Isizulu. Unfortunately, not fluent in Isizulu. I'm trying very hard to learn it. It's an extremely difficult language. Yeah, we've heard that this morning before. Why is it difficult compared to English and Afrikaans? English and Afrikaans, we were well, English is my home language. Right. Afrikaans. Afrikaans, we were forced to learn when I was a little girl at school under the apartheid era. Yeah. I think everybody was forced to learn Afrikaans. In fact, most of our people were actually taught in Afrikaans. Fine. Um, 
I did. I've been trying for a long time when my children were small. Um, I had my children later in life, and when they were small, it was fortunate that they were learning Zulu. This is Zulu at primary school. But even then, I can, I, I can study the vocabulary, but I have difficulty having a conversation because I find it very difficult. You, you were a magistrate in Inanda. One of the commissioners comes from there, and I studied there. 90% of the people in that area speak Isizulu. How did you survive? Well, in the courts, we had uh, interpreters. Oh, okay. The interpreters assisted us. Right. You have acted for altogether roughly 11 months in KwaZulu-Natal. Yes, only in kwazulu -Natal. Did you apply for a permanent position in that court where you have already acted? Well, unfortunately, they weren't advertising. They didn't advertise any posts. I did approach um, our JP in kwazulu -Natal, uh, discussing with him the possibility of applying for the Western Cape, and he said that should not be a problem at all uh, so he, he, excuse me, he encouraged you to go to the Western Cape rather than stay in Guazulu Natal? No, no, he didn't encourage me. He said, if you want to go to the Western Cape, I will support you. There's a number of judges that didn't uh, act in the places that they were eventually appointed at. One of our judges in Guazulu Natal, Judge Stain, Easter Stain, acted in the Western Cape and she got appointed to KZN. So I don't see it as because I grew up in KZN, I must now be stuck in KZN. No, I accept that. Can I just put it to you along these lines? If you were so good, so much so that the JP of KZN uh, wanted to retain you, he would have suggested that act longer he was then going to advertise a position and encourage you to apply, rather than just encourage you to go to the Western Cape. I don't think he encouraged me to go to the Western Cape, and one would have thought uh, possibly that if you didn't know me or know of my work I do, that you would have possibly phoned uh, the JP um, in KwaZulu-Natal to find out what my work ethic is. I've been shortlisted sure. for Kwazulu Natal, but obviously it also depends on demographics at the particular time that a number of people apply, um, that you might be lucky one time being shortlisted and you might not be fortunate the second time. Thank you. Is there racism on the bench? I think there's still racism throughout South Africa if one be honest with that, but they shouldn't be. Can we just confine ourselves to the bench and the profession? That's what we are talking about. Is there racism on the bench and in the legal profession? My experience of the KwaZulu-Natal bench, because that's the only experience I've had, is there's no racism on that bench. Right. I haven't encountered. Um, in the legal profession, I believe there possibly is because you do not get, um, how can I say, African junior advocates being appointed with uh, white senior advocates. Finally, Chief Justice, given that you moved to KZN when you were 10. With the benefit of hindsight, don't you think learning Isizulu was going to be just one of the ways of embracing uh, that language and the culture of the people who constitute more than 80% in the province? I would love to be fluent in Zulu, Isizulu. It's, as we all know, if you speak to a person in their own language, you speak to their heart. We all know that. Um, I believe that to speak fluent language, indigenous language, your formative years 
of when you're young, up to about seven to 10 is of major importance as far as linguistic abilities are concerned. I can greet, and, um, but I cannot hold a proper conversation. I started when I was 21, when I first went to the university there, and uh, can at least have a conversation for what it is worth. Um, Ms. Stewart? No, follow up. Uh, yes, Commissioner Malema. Ma'am, um, you are applying to be a judge, and that's why you are being interviewed at this level and not in KZN. The question is very simple. And you need to answer it honestly so that we can have a, an ability to deal with this problem of racism. Is there a racism in the judiciary and in the legal fraternity? That's what we're asking. We're not a, a JSC in KZN. And you would have made certain observation in the country and in the division where you're applying beyond KZN and then give us an objective observation. Is there racism? If there is no racism, fair enough, then we'll take that from you. And if there is racism, how do you suggest we deal with that racism? Mr. Malema, com Commissioner, it's difficult for me to speak in the abstract. I'm not trying to evade the question. I personally have not come across racism blatantly. You would see it in people's judgments, possibly. Um, so to accuse the judiciary of being racist, it's very difficult for me to say, but I think we did, and we still do have, <clears throat> judges who were appointed in the past that obviously came with their baggage and racism. Ms. Um, Stewart? Thank you, Chief Justice. I just have a short question. You chose after your LLB to go straight to the state and become a prosecutor, from what I can see on your CV. Can you explain why you chose to be a prosecutor? Yes, it wasn't really actually my choice. I did try and get articles at all the firms in Durban at the time. Um, I could not get articles. I didn't have a connection in the law firms. I then applied at the Department of Justice in Durban because I heard about prosecution, and they also told me they were full. As you can see from my CV, I had to waitress for six months, and I was doing promotional work to get money when the lady there informed me about the Department of Cooperation and Development, which was in Verulam. And hence, I heard that that place also needs law, can uh, law uh, people who have, got, who have got a degree, and I went and applied and I got the position. It was only taken over by the Department of Justice two years later. Thanks, Chief Justice. Thank you, Ms. Stewart. Uh, Commissioner Foray. Thank you, Chief Justice. Um, I recall that you appeared here previously. Is that correct? That's correct, Commissioner. And to the best of my recollection, it must have been about two years ago. 2015, yes. Uh, then you were interviewed for a vacancy in the KZN High Court, is that correct? That's correct. How many vacancies were there at that stage? At or that how stage? how many vacancies were advertised? I think there were two vacancies advertised at that stage and the Deputy JP also was interviewed at that stage. Were how those two vacancies filled during no. that sitting? No, those vacancies were not filled the first time round and neither was the Deputy JP's post for that time round. Were both the vacancies left open that time round? Yes, all vacancies were left open that time. Thank you, Chief Justice. Thank you, Commissioner Fauré. You are excused, ma'am. You are excused. Thank you so much.
Thank you.